I think it's the flavours in the Johnny Walker blends that are different. Many whiskies have got many flavours, but what Walker does is bring all of those flavours together to give a very complex and layered blend, and that's really what makes Walker whiskies different. The interesting thing is the flavours that were made in the distillery, they stay in the spirit, then they move into the cask, and they change within the cask, and then they mature there, and then we eventually blend them together. And then they'll end up in a bottle, and then they'll some, you know, somebody will then take the bottle and put it into a glass and all those flavours have remained trapped in that whisky until you add some water and those flavours just suddenly explode and they're there event after all those years and after all that care and attention they, they suddenly explode in the, in the glass. Whisky making basically is very simple. There's three ingredients. Spring water, barley, and yeast, and we process these in five stages in the distillery. The first stage is to malt the barley. We then stop the growing barley at a specific stage by drying it, and this is where we will influence the flavour of some of the whiskies by drying some of the malt along with a peat smoke being passed through it. The more peat you burn, the smokier the malt becomes, and the smokier the whisky will be. But a lot of whiskies in this region, especially in, in Speyside, use malted barley, which has not been peated. So that therefore the whiskies are much lighter, fruitier, different flavor. In the distillery, the first thing we have to do with the malt is to grind it into like a wholemeal flour. And stage two of the process is to combine the grist with hot water, the process known as mashing. The hot water activates the natural enzymes in the starch, which convert the starch into sugar. And we drain off the sweet sugar liquid called wort. The next stage is to ferment this wort. And we put yeast into the mixture, converting the sugars into alcohol. We then distill out this alcohol and produce a very crude sort of form of, of distillate called low wines. Distilling it a second time produces much, much stronger alcohol and much cleaner alcohol. This is the cut that we want to keep aside. The cut with exactly the right strength of alcohol and importantly the right flavour. So this is a new make spirit reflecting all the hard work that the maltsters and the distillers have done. And this spirit is then filled into oak casks to be matured for a minimum of three years and is now known as Scotch whisky. For Johnny Walker blends especially, you need to have good malt whisky, you need to have good grain whisky, and you need to have good casks. And the casks can be either American oak or European oak, um, and those two kinds of wood and the, and the flavours of the malt whiskies together with the grains, these are all dimensions that are so important to Johnny Walker blends. I agree, and uh, grain whiskies are wonderful whisky to, to uh, just enhance the flavours that we get from the malts, isn't it? Absolutely, and that's really what Johnny Walker blends are all about because they have all those flavours from all those different distilleries. The big challenge is to make those flavours work together. And time? Time's important. Whisky's got to be at least three years old. Some of the whiskies you see radical changes with time. Other whiskies it's much more gradual. You, the the, the flavours that we see in the whisky when it was first distilled just slowly change over the years. Time isn't everything though. Uh, Older isn't always better. The whiskies do, do get to a point where they're at their best, and that doesn't have to be a big age. So, John, how would you best describe the experience of drinking a Johnny Walker blend? And the best analogy would be, would be like looking at a wave breaking on a beach. So let me give you an example. The initial flavours from Johnny Walker Red Label are very bold, fresh, aromatic flavours just like the wave breaking, and then, then there's a the release of very aromatic and spicy aromas, maybe less powerful, but we're still there and that dynamic flavour shift is taking place. And then there's a release of smokiness as the wave finally crashes onto the shore. 